Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or good afternoon, or good morning, depending where you are. This is our Fridays with uh, Sandy and John. Our, our beloved leader, John, is uh, uh, recovering in a facility in Europe. So we're here alone today. It's just me and our guest, uh, Shannon. Shannon, could you uh, say hi and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much for having me here with Sandy on Friday. Um, I am, uh, my name is Shannon. I'm from China and currently I'm working in Mexico. So, Great. Okay, good. That was well done. Uh, some of the, we're going to do a quick mock interview with Shannon and some of the mock interview, the interviews at HBS typically are resume based. So we're gonna do this resume based. And frequently the first question is open-ended and it's very difficult. So let's get started. Shannon, here's the first question. Hi Shannon, glad to meet you. I've, I've read your folder, but the observer hasn't. Could you quickly introduce yourself to the observer? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Shannon. Um, I grew up in China and went to Peking University where I had my two majors in environmental sciences and e economics. And after graduation, I have two jobs. My first job was in investment banking, focused on structured finance. And then I made some career transition to an internet company, uh, which is Didi. Um, that provides on-demand ride hailing and food delivery business. Okay, that's good. You got, you got through it. You got through your entire resume. You're likable. They would probably interrupt, but if they don't, that is a very good way to just get through your resume. Uh, tell me about Didi. What is it and why, how do you like Mexico and what do you do there? Yeah, sure. Actually, Didi is a Chinese-based internet company that is providing the right hailing services to customers um, in China and across the globe. Currently, we have services in, um, in Latin America and in Japan and Australia. And when you say, what, what does Didi do? Is that, is that like uh, uh, America Online or Google or what? It's, it's like Uber, like Lyft, um, oh. like Uber. Yeah, I got it now. Okay. Yeah. So, so how do you like working in Mexico? Um, I really love it. It's like Mexico is a really fascinating place with its amazing culture. So I, I actually, I, I got some like trouble like without speaking Spanish at the first place, and with some like culture shock um, at the beginning. But um, after I, I came to Mexico last year, I, I'm taking Spanish classes. And I'm getting like, good. Good. Let, let's go back to Peking University. Uh, how, how did you find your experience there? Um, I actually, I find it is uh, a very great um, learning, like um, four years for me, a very great um, like transition in my life um, in terms of. Um, value and uh, I got okay, that, that's that's kind of you're, you're doing great that was your worst answer because uh, you you were trying to explain it all and you didn't have a clear idea of it yes for a question like how did you like x university the answer is it was a great experience i i was a i was a major in economics and that was great and i also met a terrific circle of friends from different parts of china uh, many of those people are still my friends uh, and I'm in touch with a couple of professors, so it was terrific. Do you get the difference? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, what, what, what was the most difficult thing about uh, Peking University? Um, I think the most difficult part was the rig rigorous academics, academic, oh, sorry, academics. Because um, Peking University is one of the top two universities in China. So every student um, got passed um, in the college entrance exam. So it's supposed to have a very rigorous standards in terms of- All right, how do you think you're doing? How did you feel while giving that answer? Um, 
I think it's not that. You were getting lost. That, that, that's, oh. look, you've, uh, we haven't gone through this, but you have an amazing record. You've, you've got terrific experiences. Peking University is kind of the Harvard of China, or as they say, the Harvard is the Peking University of the U.S. So you've got a very powerful resume. And uh, I, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, there's a, you know, uh, there's a good chance you will be interviewed, but um, the interview can screw you, okay? There, there are people like, it breaks my heart, but there's people like you who get dinged all the time for goofing up the interview. And you, you started out great, and now you're getting worse. I, I, I don't know why. Uh, let's try that again. Could you t t tell me why you went to Peking University? Okay. Um... Actually, in my high school, I, I visited um, Peking University because my cousin worked there and she majors in finance. Um, so uh, she taught me all those great things about Peking University and the uh, amazing extracurricular activities there and how, uh, what she learned there. So I paid a visit to the school and I meet with some, some students and professors. Yeah, okay, good. That's, that's a good answer. I think you've read my advice on how to answer that question, and you've <laughs> largely internalized it. So that's a good one. Here's a question they often ask. What was unexpected about Peking University when you got there? Um, the unexpected, I think, is the, the freedom to, to, to take courses in different departments. Yeah, that's a baloney answer. You knew that before you got there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, like the the freedom. Maybe. Uh, like a good answer is, what was unexpected was that a, a, a lot of the kids' parents were in the military, or a lot of the kids came from Western China, or what was unexpected was that a, a lot of the kids were interested in majoring in uh, computers. Okay, those are all good answers and honest ones, right? Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they sound honest. They're not, they're not your experience, but those are good answers. So with that in mind, tell me what was, or, or that a lot of the kids were rich. Uh -huh. Whatever the truth is, what was unexpected? Um, what um, really surprised me was um, a lot of students in my in the, uh, in in Peking University are really interested in in science, in mathematics, physics, and chemistry. All right, that's marginally okay, but they might follow up and say, "Well, what did you think they were interested in? Why, yeah. why was that unexpected?" Uh, because um, like like the, the the top two universities um, in China, Peking University and Tsinghua, like Tsinghua is very good at um, science and engineering. Yeah, Tsinghua is the MIT of uh, yeah. China. So yeah, you thought you know I, I thought all, all the science kids went to Tsinghua, yes. but it turned out that the Peking University has a lot of people who are you know science nerds, and they were. Uh, an interesting part of the experience. Yes. Uh -huh. What was your favorite course? Um, my favorite course was um, was called uh, Contemporary Issues in Korea, Asia, and Global Economy. Yeah. Why was that? How was that taught? Um, that class was my first class taught in English by a South Korean professor. Yeah, it was my first time to take an English class. In English. Yeah, and w but was this something where he lectured and you just took tests, or was it back and forth? Um, that course is a very it is a, it's a seminar format. We have around ten students in that class, or we were we were deeply engaged. And every class, we got a lot of like group group discussions and presentations. So it was a really learning opportunity. Good. What do you know about the case method at Harvard Business School? The case method um, is 
supposed to 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 create you in a in a real case scenario in a real business world. Yeah, yeah. You you sound like you're reading this off a card. Uh, you, that's important. If if you sound scripted, that's one of the ways they flunk the exam. That what you just did was a perfect example of sounding scripted. Oh. <laughs> so there's the question: What do you know about the case method? And you. Your answer said, oh, she knows about a lot about the case method. That's good. But what I'm really searching for is how well she can talk extemporaneously. And you flunk that one. So they'd say, oh, you know, she sounded scripted. And then they'll reject you. That's the, that's the way, that's the explanation they give for rejecting people. Uh -huh. Scripted. It covers a lot of things, including being scripted. It's also... <laughs> It's also what they'll say if they just didn't like you and they don't want to say that. They say, well, you sounded scripted. Oh. But in this case, you did sound scripted. Oh, really? Yeah, this, do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, does it ring true or do you get it? Uh, yes, yes. I, I think maybe I, I didn't talk like, in a, like we're in a conversation. Exactly, conversational, key. Be conversational, don't be scripted. Okay. okay, so let's try that again. Uh, I forget what the question was. What, what was your favorite class? Um, my favorite class was uh, what's called Contemporary Issues in Korea, Asia, and Global Economy. Yeah, and why did you like that? Because that was my first class um, taught in English in my university uh, courses. And um, it was taught by a Korean professor. And the class um, was um, within 10 people. And so it's a seminar based format. So everyone was very engaged. And we have a lot of group discussion. Okay, good. You're, you're finally, you got to it. Uh, like the answer should be, oh, my favorite course was this, was this first seminar I took about Korea. The, it was exciting. It was a seminar format. I got to interact with kids. I met the, I got to know the professor. It was a couple of papers that, you know, I, I learned a lot about how to write a paper and I really got friendly with the other kids. Do you mm -hmm. get the difference? Yes. Uh -huh. I just repeated everything you said, except I made it more conversational. And if they ask you what your favorite class is, you, you should, you know, look a little excited. Right. Uh, okay, here's, here's one of their tough questions about college. Uh, if, if, if you had it to do over again, what would you do differently? Um, I think I would learn a new language, like probably Spanish or French or Japanese. Yeah. Okay, how many languages do, do you know? Um, I, I know um, Chinese, that is my native, and English, and a little Spanish. Yeah, okay, that's so, uh, okay, that's an, that's an acceptable answer. They might drill down on that. The most typical answer is usually study abroad. Did you do that? You did, didn't you? I, I went to Hong Kong for um, exchange um, for a semester. But yeah, well, okay, so that's also, you know, your answer is fine. I take more language courses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we're we're going to wrap this up in five minutes, but uh, let, let's just, uh, the, a, a, a typical answer is I, I would have taken more, uh, I wish I had done more courses abroad, okay? What did you think of Hong Kong? I think Hong Kong is a very like um, is a is a financial center. Uh, it's very more than with uh, it's a, like a metropolitan city like New York. Um, okay, that's all right. What 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 um, what? Okay, here's one of their tough questions. What's going to be difficult for you at Harvard Business School? Um, it was going to be difficult for me. I think probably for the first semester, um, I would uh, find it um, a little bit difficult to to prioritize like 
Uh, yeah, besides managing your time, what? Besides, that's, besides managing your time, what is going to be difficult? Well, like to be honest, I think it, it might be very hard for me to 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 stay in in an English environment with other native speakers. I I try okay. to. That's a that's a fair answer. Uh, they they won't hold it against you. They, they'll make an independent judgment of your English. Your English is you know fine. It's good enough for this interview, and it will be good enough for Harvard Business School. Uh, I'm just telling you that. Thank you. Okay. So these are some of the problems and some of the typical questions asked at an HPS interview. We're going to post some guidelines for how to do your interview under this video. And thank you, Shannon, for being a guinea pig in actually reenacting a mock interview here, okay? I wish you lots of luck, and I think you're going to do fine. I hope to see you here next year, okay? Thank you so much, Sandy. Thank you for your advice. Thank you. Okay, adios. Bye-bye.